measurable uptick in the number of Americans switching over to plant-based diets, whether they be vegetarian or uh, full-blown vegans. For some people, though, the experience morphs into something that straddles definitions. Our guest this hour will help us understand this blurring of the lines with her book, The Flexitarian Diet. Joining us on the guest hotline right now is registered dietitian Dawn Jackson-Blattner from her office in Chicago. Welcome to the show, Dawn. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about flexing your appetite. You know, I mentioned I was in San Francisco this past week, and I mentioned to some people there uh, that I was interviewing you, and I mentioned the word flexitarian, and they said, I've never heard of that, but I love it because that's what I think I am. <laughs> yeah, so- exactly. It's a, the combination of two words, flexible plus vegetarian. So you get the word flexitarian, and it's just what it sounds like. It's, you know, people who want to wake up and be more vegetarian, but they don't want to be locked into, like, major hardcore rules. So, you know, the flexibility part is really the part that it enticed me personally um, doing this whole book and the project. It's how I live. Now, first off, Don, have you ever followed a strict vegetarian or vegan diet? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, actually, in college, um, I, I've dabbled in vegetarianism even before college days. But in college, I said, yes, you know, I'm going to be a vegan. And here's what basically happened. Uh, I could never date. I could never go on a date. <laughs> I mean, so it was like cramping my style big time, you know? <laughs> right. And, you know, and then I'll tell you what, it, not only that, I would go over to my grandparents' house, you know, and they would make like pot roast with love, and it would be barbecues, and it would be Cubs games here in Chicago with hot dogs, and it would be right. Thanksgiving turkey, and there were all of these sort of meaningful meat moments that I was missing out on. Yeah. And I, so I said, man, there's, there's got to be a better way than me sneaking all of these like pork chops in the closet when, uh, when I really am a vegetarian most of the time, but everyone's in a while, I want to throw in some meat. And so that's, you know, really what got me excited about flexitarianism. Well, as humans, we really want to put things in boxes in an all or nothing category. And uh, the fact of the matter is, I'm a flexitarian, too. I have gone months uh, being just vegan or, you know, months being vegetarian. And I know exactly what you're talking about when you come upon these situations that either hold uh, significant value, uh, you know, when it's a family event and they're cooking a certain thing or you're over at a friend's house and they've prepared this beautiful meal and you don't want to be that person, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that says, I'm not eating this. Can you make me something completely separate or what have you? So I have found that about 90% of my diet now is plant-based and uh, that I have that little 10% range where depending on the situation, I allow, allow myself some meat. And I, I guess I don't understand why more people just don't allow that sort of flexibility. Yeah, you know, I think it's easier now more than ever because there is like this term, you know, it's not like you were just a bad vegetarian because that's for years when I thought I was. I was like, you know, I, I'm always a vegetarian, but once in a while I, I'm not. And then I, I felt like, uh, you know, a failure. And so having a term like flexitarian, you know, makes people feel more likely to, to dabble in this and admit, you know, the 10% or so that they're, you know, in the meat family. It's also a good gateway category for people that- that may go on to become, uh, you know, full-blown vegetarians or vegans, they can try this flexitarian thing out, and then they they may find that the days where they uh, do not eat any meat, you know, they enjoy those days more and, and then, you know, incorporate uh, even more into their diet. And really, when I think about it, that's how I found you. I found you because you had a... Uh, I believe it was a recipe listed on the Meatless Mondays page, the Meatless Mondays campaign. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you're right about it being a gateway into more and more plant-based eating because, um, you know, I was wondering, like, how would the whole vegetarian community, um, you know, kind of embrace me, right? Are are they going to say, like, you know, (laughs) hey, thank you for having this. It, you know, allows more people to do plant-based. Or are they going to say, hey, you know, stop even trying to dabble in our world like you're, you know, just (laughs) a fake, you know? And it was actually, you, you know, very much an embrace that, you know, vegetarians that were hardcore vegans were like, hey, man, thanks so much because I think more and more of my friends are going to try plant-based. And even if they're never vegan or purebred vegetarian, at least people are eating more plants. And, you know, if I had to give a tagline to sort of my belief system is that I am very pro-plants. I'm just not anti-meat. And 
that's sort of the way of, of I think, the future, right? Is that mm-hmm. you know, we don't have to have one or the other, that we, we can be pro-plants without necessarily demonizing meat. I think sustainability-wise, that we have to go that direction. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's just that we can't, we can't continue to feed the world uh, with the amount of meat that many of us currently eat. So, uh, yeah. So uh, what sort of um, layout then did you decide for the book? How, how did you incorporate meat into the diets or how do you, how do you structure your recipes? Well, you know, I structure them how I basically live. So I live by waking up and intending to be a vegetarian. You know, I really do. So these recipes are set out to be all vegetarian, except for they have like little asterisks in there where if there is this bean-based recipe, I say that you could do a flex swap so that, uh, for example, you know, if you're using garbanzo beans in a um, asparagus and rice dish, that you could, on any given day, swap out those garbanzo beans for something like chicken or shrimp. Um, but I start out with vegetarian as the intention and then offer the swaps as a, as a sidebar. And you're nice enough to share one of your award-winning recipes with us that uh, people can find on the website at eatdrinkexplore.com. Just go to our recipe section. It's the most current one uh, listed. You can also go down down and uh, filter using vegan or vegetarian, uh, that sort of thing. But it's a fried brown rice with asparagus. I like that because it's market fresh uh, this time of year. And uh, almonds, so you get some protein as well. Yeah, and the real um, heavy hitter with protein in that dish is uh, garbanzo beans. Beans are really, when it comes to being a flexitarian, vegetarian, or vegan, beans are really a top-notch source of protein. Plus, you get all the fiber and the fullness from them. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so I, so I structure it so mostly, you know, it's aiming people in the vegetarian recipe, uh, you know, side of things. Um, but I do have levels. Like, so a lot of people love goal setting when it comes to food. Yeah. And they say, you know, well, like, when do I get to call myself a flexitarian? Like, <laughs> you know, like, what's the deal here? What are the rules, you know? Right. And so, um, you you know, leave it to America to want rules around food, you know? <laughs> I know. I mean? um, so anyway, I did uh, lay out some rules or some guidelines about becoming either a beginner, advanced, or expert flexitarian. So I did this by saying there's 21 meals in a typical week, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for seven days. And out of those 21 meals, if you do six of them meatless, you're a beginner. If you do nine to 12 of them meatless, you're advanced. Uh-huh. And if you have 15 or more of those 21 meals as being plant-based, you are an expert flexitarian. A full-blown. So, <laughs> a full-blown, a full Monty. So you and I, my friend, are definite expert flexitarians. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I, you know what I find funny? I don't, does this ever happen to you where you people say, oh, you're a, um, you're a vegetarian, right? Well, we have – that. I bought fish tonight for – you know, like they <laughs> – you know. Right. And I'm like, well, that's uh, – that's a pescatarian, actually, but I'm a, and now I have a term. Now I can say, but actually, I'm a flexitarian, so that's perfectly fine. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? That's at least closer than my grandparents got. Like every time I would say, "Hey, I'm a vegetarian," they would still offer me pork sausages, and they were like, "What are you talking about? Pork's not meat." Yeah, you. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, grandma! <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like it's just beef you're cutting out of your menu yeah. or something. <laughs> right. Well, I have no idea. <laughs> but you know, um, so you know, I have those various levels, and then for anybody who's like interested in dabbling, you know, in this world. Um, I do offer like three starter steps, you know, that if you wanted to become a flexitarian, like, hey, what would I do? What are the basics? And so the three steps that I have really created for my clientele as well is the first one is just reportioning your plate, right? Yeah. So even if you do nothing different, and all you do is decrease the amount of meat on your plate or chicken or fish and increase the amount of vegetables, you are at least one step closer to being a flexitarian. I love it. And they can find the other ones at your website, I'm imagining, DawnJacksonBlatner.com. You can also uh, follow her Twitter feed. It's great, at DJ Blatner. Facebook page is forward slash Dawn Jackson Blatner. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dawn. Oh, well, thank you. And flex your appetite. <laughs>